BBC Radio 1. Jedward, it is time to get serious at last. I know, I'm sick of all these, like, silly questions, some serious stuff. Uh, yeah, well, like, we talk about serious topics in the world. Well, this is good, because I know you guys often get our silly stuff. So we've thrown that out the window. We're giving you an opportunity to show off your brains. Is that OK? All right, let's do this. Brain, are you ready? Yes, ma'am. I can already tell this is going to be very helpful to mankind. Matt, what are we doing here? We're d- doing an interview. Don't start interviewing me. Don't oh, ask I me questions. Project. But Matt, we've never ever asked, been asked such serious questions. Yeah, we have, okay. Yeah, we Let's have do this. this. Okay, here we go. In history. Question one. The panda population of the world is dwindling. How should we encourage the pandas to breed? I think this is horrendous, Kate. The pandas are, like, dwindling. That's horrendous. I think they should encourage the pandas maybe by, like, dressing them as Britney Spears or maybe just, like, so they could, like, get together. I know. Maybe hang on, get... hang on. Can I just jump in there? You're, you're dressing the pandas as Britney Spears to make them more attractive to other pandas. Yes. yes. Like, can someone order an XXL red PVC cat suit? Thanks. I think we should get the pandas, the, the female pandas, some cool clothes and the guy pandas some cool clothes, resulting in both of them look really, really cool. Okay. I don't think intellectual people know who Britney Spears is. So we'll pick someone, like, a who... Um, someone really smart. Just name one intelligent female. Adele. I know what you need to do, okay? To make the pandas do more things, okay, we need to have panda discos in the North Pole. Yeah, okay. I mean, that's going to be very difficult for them because they normally are in hot climates. So that's, I think that's, if anything, it's going to cause things to shrivel. Oh, I was mixing them with, I was mixing them with polar bears. Uh, don't put them together. They will maul each other and then both will be extinct. Question two. The world is warming up and the ice caps are sadly melting. Where are we going to put all the penguins? I think the penguins is, are doing really, really good in the zoo right now. They've got a lot of good air conditioning. People need to see penguins. And then we need to put the penguins in freezers. Everyone needs, like, a penguin in their freezer. I know. I saw Mr. Pooper, that movie, okay, with, with Jim Carrey. Mr. Pooper, that's a different That's a very different movie. You I know think of like, Mr. Popper. Mr. Pooper was the blue movie version. All right, sorry, Mr. Popper. Okay, anyway, okay, he got the penguins. He brought them into his house. They were all sliding around the place. I think we need to all adopt a penguin. Everyone needs to adopt a penguin and bring the penguins to their house. Yeah, so the government d- would give everyone in the UK a penguin to look after. After, and they would have to keep that in their freezer alongside their frozen chips and Vianetta. If you guys had penguins yourself, what would you call them? Probably just penguin. If I had a penguin, okay, I'd call it something cool. I'd call it something like a cool name like Matt or something. Like, hey, Matt, can you stop, like, sliding around my house? Can you stop, like, pooing everywhere? But, like, Sorry, are you talking to me now or to the penguin? Because that does sound an awful lot like some of my behaviour. Right, next question. Um, there is trouble with the euro. Should Britain keep the pound, enter the euro, or think about a new form of currency? I think the currency whole thing, the way it's, like, euro all across Europe, it kind of shows, like, a union. And the th- way that, like, UK only have, like, a pound, I think it's kind of cool because... You got like, the currency, you can only use it here. And it's like everyone's like, a pound, a pound. How much is that? One pound. I think the pound's totally awesome. Okay, I don't think the UK should ever get rid of the pound. Yeah, because then the, the Queen won't be on the currency and that'd be kind of like real stressful for her. Between that and being married to Philip, it'd be enough to push her over the edge on And then the whole pound sign would be totally gone. It's a really cool sign. You'd have to remove a button from your keyboard. Oh, yeah. Mm, be awful. Yeah, really bad. So you've answered that then. We keep the pound. The job market is quite stagnant at the moment. Entrepreneurs are needed to create new jobs for people. What amazing business ideas do you guys have? I think entrepreneurs, okay, they need to get to act together and start inventing loads of new things that people need. What sort of stuff? What do we need? Like, they need to get, like, maybe paper that, like, um, you can reuse. It Change colours. Yeah. Paper that changes colours. What practical application does that have? I need to think about it, okay? I haven't really got to talk about it, okay? You just put me on the spot there, okay? So we've got to think about, like, loads of cool things. i got amazing ideas. We're not telling you our ideas, okay? Because we're the entrepreneurs and we're going to come out with them. So entrepreneurs, we're not telling you. All you entrepreneurs listen to this right now, okay? You all suck and we're coming to get you. That's not that motivational for the unemployed. Everyone who doesn't have a job, okay? It's no big deal. Just say you're freelance. <laughs> Uh, that's what I do for the other the other hours what of the week. Do, what do you do? I'm freelance. Or just say you're an actor or a model or something. Yeah, because it's kind of crazy when you go to Los Angeles and everyone's like, I'm an actor. And it's like, what movie have you been in? And Mr. Pooper's Penguin. So you can't call yourself an actor. Okay, fine. So basically, if you're unemployed, say you're freelance or an actor. Yeah. I don't know, Kay. Just chill out for a while. Wait until the jobs come. <laughs> Oil is running out. We need a new source of energy. What do Jed would suggest? I think like everyone's too reliant on oil at the moment, Kay. It's really, really stressful. Is it personally stressing you out, Edward? It's really stressing me out because when you go into an oil petrol station, the smell of oil is not good for you. So it's more the smell than the rapidly dwindling resources. I was thinking that maybe motorways that are powered by wind and the wind is kind of, it's like a huge fan that blows the cars up and then they just kind of like glide. And if you want to go to the right or to the left, you just push the wind to the opposite side and it pushes the car. Where's the wind come from? I don't know, it'd be kind of like, did you know this, the, the game, that, like the Harry Potter game where it le- levitates the ball? So your solution is magic? We need to contact all these magicians and ask them how we do magic and make magic. So there you go, that was Jedward. Uh, we had to get David Blaine on the phone. Quite difficult to do because he's got really bad reception, that block of ice.
There is more from Jedward on the way, if you can believe it. Um, they are quite remarkable to listen to. One of the things they do, which is really uncommon, I think, is instead of going, ah, um, more, ah, uh, they just say, okay, all the time. Just fill any gap. Okay. Just say, okay, whenever they want. Okay. Okay. Uh, I painstakingly went through uh, that interview and listened to every single okay that they said. And we thought we'd play a bit of a game with this. Uh, we've cut them all together. So we know how many there are. You've heard one half. There's still another half to come. So if you want, text in your prediction to 81199 of how many OKs Jedward said in what? It's like a 10-minute interview. How many OKs in 10 minutes? Text 81199. We might give you a ring back and get you on the radio. This isn't a competition, though. It's just for fun. So if you don't fancy texting... By all means, don't interview now. I bumped into Jedward today, you know. I was, it was a bit weird. I was going into work to do some telly stuff, and uh, the telly stuff is filmed in a shopping centre, bizarrely, at the top floor. And I was uh, walking through, and I saw one lone, massive jet of uh, sort of platinum blonde hair. I was like, well, that guy looks like Jedward, but it can't be because there's only one of him. They're always together. You never see them apart. Uh, and I looked closely, and it was actually one of Jedward, and they were surrounded by people. And I just thought, this is really weird, you never see one of them in the wild, firstly, but then away <laughs> from the other. It just doesn't happen. Um, and then, as I went to go in the lift to go upstairs, have you just vomited on yourself there, Jesse? You're all right. <laughs> okay, good, just at the mere thought of them being separated. No! As I went to go into the lift, press the button, the door slid open, the other one of Jedward was inside, and he went, Matt Edmondson, we're on your radio show tonight. I was like, yeah, you are. And they later tweeted me, on DM, and they said, Yo, man, we're crazy fans. We know where you work. We'll be back. Only messing. I don't think they are. I don't think they are. I'm slightly worried now they're going to be following me around. Anyway, here is part two of my interview with Jedward, and may I remind you that it's very, very serious. BBC Radio 1. The media is currently in turmoil because of its association with intrusive acts like phone hacking. If someone hacked your voicemail, what would they hear? Like you'd hear, like, I'm going, I'm going to shop now. I'm going, I, I, I would think, what would you hear? I don't know. So let's recreate it. Imagine I have phoned in. I'm hacking into your voicemail. You'd hear us talk I'll hear, the, I'll hear your, your answer phone message, which sounds like... Beep. No, you'd hear, like, a lot of cool songs, because usually when we come up with a cool song idea, we'd ring up our voicemail and record it. That's a very confusing voicemail message. I know you do. Hey, hey Lily K, what's going on? Hey, Lily K. It's kind of crazy, okay, because no one actually knows our phone number. It's usually when we ask for someone's phone number, we just get their number and then call them. Oh, okay. Our voicemail, here's talking to Simon Cole, Louis Wald, Cheryl Cole, Vanilla Ice, Tara Reid. Here's talking to loads of people. Yeah, that list got rapidly less famous and impressive as you went on. Do you speak to each other often? We share a phone. Do you really? Yes, yes we, we share a phone. More and more people are living on the bread line. What's your advice for saving money? Are they eating bread? Well, some of them are, yes. Bread line, okay. Save more money. Stop going out drink, okay? Just drink water. Yeah, you could, and you can get that free if you are patient and stand out in the rain. Okay, what do you think, Edward? Just buy, like, a big, massive thing of pasta. Like, pasta lasts forever. All right, okay, to save money, okay, all you need to do is get a massive piggy bank, okay, a piggy bank, and put every little coin and everything in it, and then smash it and see how much money you got in the end. I'm going to have to buy a new piggy bank. That's going to cost me. Uh, what do you do? They need to stop reading magazines so they don't know what, they, what they're not having. Like, they don't, they don't have to realise that everyone, all the famous people have that, so they don't, they're not used to the whole Oh, okay, thing. that's quite an interesting and philosophical point. You want them to stop uh, coveting the uh, possessions of the wealthy. Yeah, and then they won't know what they don't have. And they'll have saved £1.50 a week by not buying heat. So they'll be happy with bread. They'll think it's, like, really, really expensive. I know, you don't think about it, okay? You're totally cool, okay? Bread's still cool. We eat loads of bread. Go to all your friends' house and eat all their food. Or just go out, out for dinner with all your friends get them to pay. It's a killer strategy. Become a nudist and don't wear any clothes. Then you don't have to buy any clothes. That's a very good suggestion. Yeah. Well, we'd never, ever do that, but that's totally crazy. Why wouldn't you do that? I don't know, it's too exposing. Because we like wearing skinny jeans, we like wearing tops, we like wearing shirts and ties, we like wearing cool shoes. I, have you ever been naked in front of another person for a long period of time? <sighs> um, Alright, change your subject, okay, what's the next question? <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, Pac-Man would force the issue on this one. Who's Pac-Man? Uh, he's, uh... We love Pac-Man. Uh, he's a bit like Pac-Man, but less scared of colourful ghosts. The NHS is in a tough place. What do you think of the government's plan to introduce hospitals, a Jed Ward, to deal with Jed Mania? What? A Jed Ward, okay? We need to start building Jedward hospitals, okay? They have, what do you think? I don't know, okay? I feel like a president here, okay? I feel like I'm running for election here, okay? I feel like everyone's listening to me right now, okay? Guys, okay? I, whatever we say in this, don't write it in, like, your exams. And we should just say that that does apply to those of you doing a PhD or a master's. The Jed Ward, the Jedward music playing non-stop. No, we're trying to cure them from Jed mania. I mean, that we, could work. Okay, we put on loads of depressing music, like, just, like, 
crazy music. We put on boring music. Uh, you've made some very uh, gripping points. Finally, can we have from you a manifesto that would encourage people to take on board your ideas? You're live to the nation, to seven billion people in five, four, three. Hello, my name is Edward Grimes. I'm here going for president election. I think you should advise what I do because I have like a PhD in Jedward and everything that I did to the country. I've got cool hair, I've got a cool suit. Oh, is it good? Oh, is it in the country really, really good? I know, Barack Obama. John. Hey guys, Kay, this is John K. I am running for president of the country. I promise to get loads of new jobs. I promise to get you free work. I promise to get you a cool house. No more taxes. Free clothes. You can do whatever the heck you want. You can have cool hair. You can be awesome. You can, what else can you do? What are you talking about? I'm so much better than you. What are you talking about? I'll be the best president ever. You're not saying any valid points. You're just saying cool words. You take me serious because I've got no spots right now. Well, I'm sold. The new regime starts today. The new regime starts today. We're really, really excited about the new reinforcement in the law. No, actually, I don't want to be president. I want to be the pro There's no president in the UK. I want to be president because I use a lot of big words. What do you call people who are minister? Yeah, cool. I want to be a minister. Hey, guys, okay, I'm Minister John Kay, and I'm running for minister, okay? I'm going to say a lot of things that sound really, really cool, but then when I actually become minister, I won't do any of them. <laughs> what are you talking about? There you go. I think we've just had some satire from John. Thank you very much. I am exhausted. I love the question, what do you call someone who's a minister? It's a minister. Now, we were speculating before when we played that Jedward interview just how many times they said OK throughout it. It's quite a lot. I can tell you the exact amount of times that they said OK was 44. Would you like to hear all of those OKs uh, strung together in an unbearable to listen to stream? Yeah. Yeah, okay, here it is. Okay, 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 ok